Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here, and welcome back to the workbench. Today, I'm doing another challenge video, answering the question, can you build a plastic model kit using only super glue? Well, let's see if we can't find out by building this Airfix Spitfire Mark 1A in 170 second scale. This particular kit does come with glue and paints included, but I'm pretty much just going to ignore these. I have quite a few of these Spitfires in the stash, and it makes sense to use one of these for the challenge. So, what are the rules for this build? Well, you see these glues I have here? I can't use any of them. The only glue I can use in this entire build is a tube of super glue. Oh, and probably a few cocktail sticks to help apply it. Other than that, I can use any paints or other products that I want as long as I only use the super glue to bond the parts together. So, let's get started. I'll snip or cut away the parts of the kit from their sprues and then clean up any rough plastic using a sanding stick. Having broken the seal on the glue, I'm now ready to start assembling the kit. I glued the control column to the cockpit floor and then glued this to the control panel. I've already started to notice that the glue takes longer to dry than normal poly cement and some of the parts are a struggle to stay in place. The rear bulkhead was glued into place here. The pilot seat was next and as you can see, the glue is not bonding quickly and it's causing me a few issues. Things just keep falling off. After a while and a bit of patience, I did manage to get these things all in place though. These gas cylinders were then popped into their mounting point inside one of the fuselage halves. This was then followed by the cockpit assembly. I'm just going to whack the paints onto this model because let's face it, that's not why we're here. But I sprayed the internal areas with some Hitaka Eteria Green and when it was dry, I popped the pilot into place in his chair. I already painted the chair and control panel off screen and applied the decal for the panel. I had to cut the feet off the pilot too as he didn't quite fit otherwise. Now it's time to join the two fuselage halves. I ran the glue around the edges, carefully lined up the halves and pressed them together. I have to be really careful to not glue my fingers together or to the model for that matter. The rudder was added. Then the horizontal tail surfaces. The tail wheel was glued into its hole on the bottom of the fuselage. Now the lower wing half was added to the fuselage. This was a bit of a pain as the super glue just doesn't have the same initial grip as poly cement and I found the plastic part slipped around a bit. The upper wing halves could then be added too and I had the same issue with the moving around a bit on the glue. The underwing air intakes and radiators could then be added along with the pitot tube on the end of the wing. This was followed by the central intake which comes in two parts. I decided to add the landing gear legs as well at this point, but I will leave the wheels off until later. I noticed that one of the edges of the wings just wasn't bonding together. I held it together for ages, but it was just working against me the whole time. And as a result, I ended up gluing myself to the plane. Sometimes we must suffer a little pain for our craft, I guess. The aerial mast was glued into its hole behind the cockpit and then this was followed by installing the engine exhausts on the nose. The propeller was glued to the back plate and then the spinner glued over the top. The clear cockpit canopy, which I've already masked with tape, was carefully glued into place. I used a small amount of super glue here to try and avoid fogging up the plastic. I'm just going to whiz through the painting of this kit seeing as it's a challenge video and not a full build. So first I sprayed on some Hatak S Sky Type S on the bottom. When it was dry, it was masked and then Dark Earth was sprayed on the top. Dark Green was then applied in a camo pattern, completely freehand, which, by the way, is my first time giving freehand camo a go. K Colors Gloss Varnish was sprayed on the top when all that camo was dry. 
and then when the gloss was dry, the decals were applied using some Humbrol decal fix to get them to soften into the details. Finally, when they had cured, a final coat of matte varnish was sprayed over the top to seal them in. And with all that boring painting out of the way, let's get back to some more super glue. The wheels, which I've already painted black with silver hubs, were added onto the landing gear legs. There is also a small clear part which was carefully glued into its hole on the bottom of the plane. The prop was pushed into place, and finally the masking tape was peeled away. And that's it! Not a long build, and if I'm honest it only really took about 8 hours of build time. So, let's get a few things out of the way whilst we look at the finished model. Firstly, I didn't bother with any extra detailing or weathering, as this was simply an exploration of whether building a model kit with only superglue was possible, or at the very least, sensible. Secondly, I know there are some gaps visible around the model, and no doubt someone will comment and complain about how easy they would have been to fix. But there is one really good reason why I have left them. They were caused by the superglue. The great thing about poly cement, and the main reason we use it on our plastic kits, is that it literally melts the plastic parts together. Superglue, on the other hand, just doesn't do that. It effectively creates a layer in between both parts, grabs onto both parts and holds them together. So whilst the model has been glued together, the glue is in those gaps. It's made those gaps, and I wanted you all to see them to understand the struggles I had with this build. And let's face it, it would be quite misleading of me if I were to just gloss over them and hide them anyway. Another problem, as previously mentioned, was that before the superglue actually starts to bond, it pretty much acts as a lubricant, and the plastic parts are free to slide around on top of each other. I found that a lot of my parts took quite a while to stick together. And talking of things that got stuck together, superglue loves skin! Whilst I was super careful with my glue, I did glue myself to the model once, and found I stuck my fingers together slightly a couple of times. Fortunately, it was nothing major, due to the small amount of glue I was using. But this does present the main problem with this product. One slip of the hand, or drop in attention, and you've suddenly glued yourself to something you shouldn't have. And I can imagine that being quite a serious medical problem. Anyways, looking at the kit in general, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. My first go at freehand airbrush camouflage isn't too bad, and can be improved in the future. The decals went on okay, although the roundels on the wings did crinkle a little bit. And in general, the model has been glued together successfully. I do wonder how long it will remain glued together though. I am aware that superglue can become brittle in time, and parts might just fall off whilst it gathers dust on my shelf. And with that, I think it's probably time to wrap this one up. I set out with a challenge to answer the question, can you build a plastic model kit using just superglue? And I think that you would agree that the answer is yes. But then I pose to you a second question. Should you? It is my personal opinion that superglue does indeed have its uses in the scale modelling hobby, but for being the sole method of gluing a plastic model kit together, it should be completely avoided. If it's the only glue you have, and really want to give it a go, then please heed my warnings and learn from my mistakes here. But specialist poly cements exist for a reason, and will give you a much better model at the end. Let me know down in the comments, did you enjoy my challenge video, and have you ever tried to build a kit using just superglue? How did it go? If you enjoyed this one, please leave a like and consider subscribing so you never miss a modelling video. Shout out to my patrons and channel members, the extra support these guys give my channel allows me to continue to make videos on a regular basis. I'd like to welcome my newest channel member on YouTube, who is Marius. Welcome to the club. 
Take a look at the links in the description for more information on how you can get involved. Finally, I'd like to say a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I will see you on the workbench again next time.